just to say if G said he saw him get smacked and he, he a grown man and we do not take, I don't get money to do no, sh no, no interviews either. So we know that I don't get money to do interviews. What's up, everybody? This is the world famous Ed Lover, and you are watching Forgotten Kings TV. That's right. Forgotten Kings TV. Come on, son. Then um, this morning, I get this text. This where I get this 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 alert that says Jermaine Dupree responds, and so I go to respond to Jermaine Dupree. As soon as I respond, they done kicked me off Instagram for three days. Octopro, what going on? Yo, they put me off Instagram for three days just for responding. Let me tell you what I said. So this is what we're going to say. So I go on. And so it said... Mark Curry and Greg, are y'all writing comic books? And then had the, all of this is lies, and then the emoji, 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 right? Which I never really said, you know, when I saw with my eyes, I ain't say I saw Jermaine when he got smacked. That's when G said he seen Jermaine when he got smacked. I know a few people that had the same similar story, but... It doesn't make you a bigger man or a lesser man if you get smacked. It doesn't mean that you a sucker. It doesn't mean that something's getting taken away from you, bro. I got smacked before I got tied up. I got beaten, all kind of stuff. But when when you go through something and you come out of it, that means, you know, you survive. How much is your book? The books, the autographed books, you DM me, they 25 and then the shipping. So, and then the, you, if you don't want it autographed, they have them on Amazon, but I suggest you get it autographed from me. That'd be the thing. But look, make sure y'all go get that book, please. I, want, I love all the support. I love the support. All right. So, said uh, one person, let me tell y'all what, 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 so you can understand. Every artist that Suge Bully to put under his management, damn near every artist he had to go in there and get, whoever was the, on that record label damn near got slapped. So when you got to look at the track record and then you got to say, okay, did Jermaine Dupri ever have any artists that were on death row? And if he had an artist on death row and you knew how Suge used to do business, then you can kind of tell if he had an artist on death row or that was signed to death row or used to be affiliated with death row, then you would know. You would know, right? You would know. So if he had an artist that was signed to death row, let me do your research, if you ever come up with something, and you say, yeah, he did have an artist that was dealing with death row. So do you think Suge ever did, always did good business with people, especially when it comes to deals, making, getting the best for the artist that he had on his management team, Dancing with the Devil, I met up with you years ago, brought a great book, thanks, Octopro. Is it a comic book? Is it a comic book? I don't know if it's a comic book. He's a character in the book. And, and this is what I said this morning. And, and by, by no means, you know, Jermaine has always been a cool person as far as passing and, and what up and waving and all of that. But what I said this morning, I was like, yo, for your whole 30-year run, me and you never made one dime or one song together. I never been into the studio and recorded one song with him. I never did no promotion or nothing for Criss Cross. The brat, I always felt like his artist was from out of town, but then he had Jagged Edge and Escape, so then, uh, it was Criss Cross, but then everybody else, Bow Wow was you know, somewhere else. So it was like, yo, I used to be like, yo, we don't even make no money together, but it ain't, it ain't no problem. 
But just to say, if G said he saw him get smacked and he, he a grown man and we do not take, I don't get money to do no, no, no interviews either. So we know that I don't get money to do interviews. Mm -mm. I sell books off of the interview. See, I reverse it. I have something to sell when I interview. Like if you had a new song, when you do an interview, then you push your new song. But if you ain't got nothing to sell and you do an interview, sometimes it just, just seems like you're defeating the purpose. So I sell my books so I don't have to charge people for interviews. So I don't charge people for interviews. So we get that right for the comic book. Um, you know, no, no love lost, brother. You know, we, 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 we never really broke bread, so it's cool. Cool dude. But damn. Had to go head on and get that right there. Stated. it. Cleared it because I can't, I can't respond to no. When people um, say something, I can't respond because they got my whole account locked until... The fifteenth or something like that, so I can't I can't respond to the fifteenth. So people get to talk about me. It can go crazy right now, all the way to the fifteenth. Then I can come back and, and, and but I can go live. So I had to go live today to talk to y'all because uh, they don't they already knew they was like yo the, today's gonna be so crazy that let's just make sure he don't get a chance to respond. Let's just quiet him right fast. I said damn they shut me down. I like that, though. Gave me a chance to clean up. I cleaned up my house today. Got everything beautiful, feel good. Cleaned all my clothes. Went and uh, uh, blowed the yard, put all the leaves, blowed all the leaves out the yard. You know what I mean? Yeah, comic book. Do I got a comic book? I got a book. I don't know. You better do some music. That's what we want to hear. Then we want to we wanna know what's really going on. So look. <sighs> I'm going to tell you, man, I remember I used to go in the office all the time. When I used to go in Bad Boy office, Puff used to look at me and be like, Mark Curry, you still want to fight? And I used to look at him and be like, yeah. Yeah, I kind of do. I, I want to fight. I really want to fight. <laughs> so every time he see me, he'd be like, yo, you still want to fight? I'd be like, yeah, I still want to fight. <laughs> it's a learned behavior, y'all, because I, I was reading this one thing I want y'all to be abreast on, where um, what he said was... Um, Diddy said Andre Harrell turned him evil by victimizing him. Now, he said in an interview one day that Andre Harrell turned him evil by victimizing him. He said it with his own, own, I mean, it came out of his own mouth. So, you, you know, you ain't got this, no speculations needed. Is what he said. I saw the interview. Diddy said Andre Harrell turned him evil by victimizing him. And I wonder if that's how people do, why people do people. It's like, we got to really get at the root of this, y'all, and start getting deeper into the people who are responsible for the way these people think. I wish we could do a class action lawsuit. Because when you think about the damages that are done to like artists, there's a lot of damages, mental damages, um, financial damages. It's, it's just so much sometimes that you'd be like, how can I recover? How can I try to get back from this high spot or this high place in life that I fell from? And you spend your whole life trying to get back to where you fell off. And, you, you know, it, it's heartbreaking sometimes for a lot of people who... Who can't handle it, which drives a lot of people again to alcohol and drugs. And this is what the what it does to you. You know, it's almost like 
trying to um, outdo something you did great and you're trying to outdo something that you did great before and you just keep trying to outdo it and then you'd be like, wow, I, I think that I made myself the best that I could possibly be and now I'm trying to make myself better. It gets a little nerve wracking because you always want to change things and you say, you know, maybe I can get better results if I change this. Maybe I'll get better results if I change this. You know what I'm saying? And so it creates that animal, that that discomfort in the artist. But he said he victimized him. How many people have been victimized. We need people to come forward and tell us about your story. <laughs> mm. I never really made no money with, with, with Jermaine. I ain't never made money like, well, I did do some promotion for Dallas when he had the back with the back with boys on Rowdy. And then they used to be like that I was promoting boys in the hood and all of them a little bit, and I had them, I was doing them more than I was doing back with, but Boys in the Hood had more of a budget, and Rowdy didn't have a big budget like that, so I just kept on doing, you know, I had three trucks for Boys in the Hood, and, and Bad Boy, I had maybe one truck for Dallas, but everybody got on the road, we went on the road, I took everybody on the road. That's what I did. You know, Diddy catalog is worth just as much as Robert Kelly's now. The beautiful Cassie played her part perfectly. I don't know, man. Like what he got going. I I just I just it's crazy to see how this kind of stuff can bring you down. Like what can really bring you down. You would never expect that 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 these are the kind of things that could destroy your your run and bring you down. Hmm. Yeah, but I just wanted to come on here today and just say that real fast, especially just to, to talk about the comic book. He called it a comic book. Maybe it's because the artwork. I don't know. But don't 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 look at don't judge a book by its cover. That's something that I would like to tell Mr. Dupree. Don't judge a book by its cover. You judge the book by what you read on the inside. And when you get on the inside and you read that truth, sometimes you just got to say, hey, man, the truth is the truth. I can't wait to Suge Knight come out and tell everybody what he did that night. But I kind of think he, he's not going to say too much because, well, well, because, you know, there definitely was some some criminal stuff that went on, but all of the people who did the crimes are dead. That's why it's so, you know, it's not, the people are dead. You know, the man who shot the man is dead. The man who got shot is dead. So it's just the truth. To be able to know the truth is just the beautiful, the beautiful part of because I cannot say nothing and then nobody never know anything. But then how would I be being if knowing the truth in somebody's family uh, they lost somebody and, and I don't want to tell them what happened. Like, if my son and your son went to the club together and then, or or my cousin and your cousin went to the club together and then, you know, um, something happens to my cousin and as soon as they come back, I'm going to ask your cousin what happened to my cousin. What happened to my cousin, right? I don't listen to Robert Kelly's music since you know, the lie the industry is nasty and see you just speaking. Yeah, it's just the way the industry, it's the industry, y'all. But yeah, um, just wanted to address that tonight about the comic book thing. It's not a comic book. This is not a game, you know. And then it's crazy. We don't read, you don't, we don't talk. You don't reach out to me. We we don't. I'm not. I'm not somebody that you, that's on your your call list. You don't even have my phone number. 
You know, I never talked to Jermaine Dupri on the phone, period. I see him when he was when he was young, he'd be out there like, yeah, we trying to get Atlanta popping like New York. I see him at Crystal's over at Old National, some to drive through. I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying to get Atlanta popping like how they doing in New York. He had this dude named Jabriz the Jabril, whatever. It was a, his first rap group I think he had on Columbia or something like that. So I supported it. I support. I support. But one thing I will say is before he'd be embarrassed about allegedly being slapped, know that it's okay, man. Just because you, if, if it happened, that don't mean that you, you, you a less person than who you are. You, you done some great things. You done some powerful things. So nobody can, not a slap can take that away from you. In a slap, man, I'm trying to tell you, it ain't, it ain't something that you got. It ain't the end of the world. You can get over that. You can heal. Everybody heals. Sometimes you just got to know to take, if that's the case, when they say you got to take it on the chin, you got to take that on the chin. Sometimes you just got to take shit on the chin, man. No homo. No homo. But you just got to sometimes... You got to take the bad with the good. You got to take the good with the bad. It all comes together. Everything ain't always going to be good. I right, see you later, Blue Frame. So it's okay. It's okay. I don't want nobody to feel like if you slap a man in time, his wounds will heal. If you slap a man in time, his wounds will heal. Probably. It's all about healing, though. But it's, we get embarrassed, like, we get embarrassed because, you know, somebody might have punched you in the face or something like that. You know, you punched me in the face, but, you know, there's other ways that you can always get people back. You don't always have to, to, to fight, you know, fight fire with fire. So many different ways you can fight fire. You know, you can fight fire with water, probably put it, by, put it out, be a little bit better. But what up, Jay, every day? It's all right, bro. So it's just, just don't, you don't have to be embarrassed. It's okay. People get slapped. Every day somebody gets slapped. Just, if you believe it or not, somebody just got slapped somewhere in the world just now. And somebody else just got slapped just now. My girl slapped the shit out of me. A couple, like a couple of times, I didn't, I wasn't even expecting it. I was like, Pap, oh shit. I was like, damn, she just smacked the shit out of me. My mother used to smack the shit out of me. Now, my daddy didn't smack me, though. My daddy used to whoop my ass. He didn't smack me and shit. My mother, yeah, she smacked. I'll get loose at the mouth, something like that. Back talker, just like that. Bam! You'd be like, wow. So it's okay. So all I want to say tonight, y'all make sure y'all go to the link in the bio. Go to the link in the bio. Get you one of those books. If you haven't gotten the book already, subscribe to my YouTube because I'm going to start going on YouTube and doing this a little bit more because I know we can monetize and make some, we could probably make some bread off of this YouTube, but not off of this um, Instagram. All right. And then make sure, again, get that book and then also stream that new music. Make sure I got a couple of new songs on there. I'm going to keep pushing those two songs until once those streams get up, I'm going to put another one out. Yeah, my mom used to whip my ass like a dude, too. Hell yeah. You, just, you know, that's what make you tough. You know, that's what really make you tough, man. Make you learn. It's just a learning experience, man. Did you learn when sometimes when you get smack, you learn something. There's something there's facts behind the smacks. You learn something. You learn to live different. You learn sometimes you, you it teaches you to be a better person. It teaches you sometimes to stop playing games with grown people. Sometimes people be playing games with grown people. And then it just take that one slap. Pop, and then, hey, they ain't playing no more games with you no more. They know you serious. Every now and then, if you got a good friend and you close to a friend, every now and then, 
like every seven years or so, you got to give a good friend a smack just to wake him up. I'm telling y'all, it's okay. I told y'all this before. You got a good friend about every seven years. Got to smack him. Black wolves getting about that time because they just keep getting pushing and getting, you know, sometimes they getting a little bit, you know, feeling like they can, you know, getting a little bit more, you know, Every time it's just getting more disrespectful, disrespectful. Everything you be like, all right, let me bring you back. Get your mind right, real. Yeah, you got to bring them back. Let me bring you back right fast. Bring your face on over here. Meet the fist. You know what I'm saying? What did the face say to the five fingers? Smack, bam. It's okay. You get too comfortable. You know what I'm saying? You got to figure out when people actually smack people, they've been they've been wanting to, they've been really wanting to do that for a minute. Like that that means a lot. That means it's been going on for a minute. We've been having some kind of bad business dealings or some either I've been looking for you and you've been running from me or however it may be, but when you see them, you be like, "Now nah, the reason why this is what it's going to be is because I've been looking for you." Then you, bam, it goes like that. You'd be like, wow, remember what you said to me on the phone? I told you when I saw you in person that we was going to finish having that conversation. So sometimes people say stuff to people on the phone. And then they be talking real tough on the phone. Then when they see that person in, 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 in person, they be like, man, what's up with all of that you was talking on the phone? Or all of that other tough stuff you was saying. Then they be like, ah, ah, ah. And the next thing you know, smack. Just like that. Bow. And then that person who was talking all of that on the phone, they realized they'd be like, wow, maybe I shouldn't do that because I never thought that this person would walk up to me and do this. And you'd be like, you just never thought that it was going to happen like that. You just got to take it back one time and release it. Bow. Like that. Even friends, even friends, friends, we fight. Me and friends, we fight. It's all right to fight as friends. As long as we, at the end of the day, you know, we, we got to learn to forgive if we're going to forgive. But I don't know. I ain't never, sugar ain't never smacked me. And his hands look real big. Seem like if he smacks somebody real little, that it'll almost like crush their face up. Like, wow, his hands is like this. Wow. All right. I'm going to bed, man. Link in the bio. Do you watch the Reggie White set about you and the bomb first on YouTube? Nah, what did Reggie White say about me? Do you watch what Reggie White said about you? What did Reggie White say about me? I don't, I don't never really be watching too many other people's footworks. What might Reggie White say about I? I don't know if he was in the club that night. Was he in the platinum that night when all of that happened? Because if he was in the platinum that night, then he might have something to say about me. But if he wasn't there, I don't know. He tried to indicate you and Puff was the same. I don't even know who Reggie White is to compare him to anybody. Like, yeah, I don't even know who he is. Me and Puff is the same. I wish I had some of that money Puff got. That's why you could tell he lying right off the rip. Puffy got way more money than me. Even after the 18 companies done turned on him, he still got more money than me. So I don't know what Reggie talking about. For real. What does, who was Reggie friends with? Reggie who? Let me do I have to Google. He's just trying to see was as worse as Puff. Just a bunch of BS. My heart is pure. I got a, I got a good heart. There's certain things that I just can't do because my heart just won't allow me to do it. So I, um, and what we call that is morals. I have morals. So before I do a lot of things, I think, is it morally correct? Am, am I doing something that, that my heart is going to be all right with for the rest of my life? And if my heart feels like it's not going to be what I do, then I just leave that alone. He the head of security for death row. Oh, I guess he did a good job. If he did the security, the only he had no reason to talk to me. 
He don't have no reason to talk to me. But I tell you a name. I got a name. I want y'all to go back to Reggie, Mr. Reggie White. And I want y'all to just say this name to him. And when I say this name, it's going to make him shake. And I don't have to say anything else. I don't know Reggie. I don't know Reggie, but I know Claude Austin. I know Claude Austin. Now, maybe ask Reggie if he know Claude Austin. And if he knows Claude Austin, then he, he might have a story to tell. Other than that, I don't really think he has anything to say to me. You know, I, I understand he might know T-Bone. He might know, uh, um, hmm. He might know uh, Big Lurch. Yeah, so tearing him down while he's already going through enough having good morals. Before you go to bed, I wanted to get your opinion on the new Black Rob album, Life Stories 2. Without Curry in it, it's like getting a Cracker Jack. I'm, it's, it's, without me, I don't know. I wish I could have got on that to say something, but it seemed like I wasn't invited to the party, so I just didn't really indulge in the album because I just didn't feel like Rob Hart was in it because if Rob was alive, he would have been like, I'm not doing it without without Mark. Reggie wears a diaper. He's in the wheelchair and can't walk. And he was the security. What he was doing? We seen something going on. Would he pee on somebody? I don't know. No, you can just ask him, though. This Claude Austin. Rest in peace, Claude Austin. Shout out him. Yeah. <laughs> Let me let y'all go, man. Let me let y'all go. <laughs> just ask him. Just say, hey, how's, do you know Claude? Do you remember Claude Austin? Just ask him. Since he was the head of Death Row Security, and was he at the studio? Do you know about the Beverly Hills Hotel over there? Do you know what? Oh, my gosh. March 9th, you want me to tell you the year? March 9th. March 9th. Let me tell you something. March 9th, 1995. I believe it was 95. A man lost his life on March 9th, 1995. It was some foul play. It was some foul play. And on March 9th, 1997, a great man lost his life. On March 9th. So we got one on March 9th, 1995. We got another one on March 9th, 1997. Ask Reggie if he can tell you about that. I'll see y'all later. Looks like y'all just chasing money like the females is big dog. When you chase things, that means it's running from you hustling. So I don't never chase anything. Only thing I do is sit still and let the things that I desire come to me. So that's one thing I want to tell you. When you chase it, that means it's running from you. I'm a wise guy, man. I don't, and I don't, and I can go use these hands to paint a wall and still make money. So this ain't my only way of making money. This is just, this is just another way, another form of making money. I make money doing construction. I make money building. You know what I'm saying? I, I build with, well, I'm a carpenter, master carpenter. So I'm, I'm pretty all right. Tomorrow I got a couple, I got a house I'm rehabbing. I got a um, studio. I got to go do some, some work in there. All of that to paint and build some new stuff. I'm fine with what I'm I don't need to, that's why I don't charge for no interviews. And I don't even chase no. I don't even chase nothing. Mike, I don't even chase money, cause it, when you, when you the closer you get to it, the further it seems. You be like, man, I'm not chasing that stuff. I'm not chasing it. I, I I just I refuse to run after stuff like that, bro. Even though a lot of people is doing it, but I don't have to make my. I would never. I won't feel right making money. I, don't, I wouldn't feel right making money off of a story like this. I sell the book. 
what you're doing is like female stuff. I don't know what female stuff is. So when you're doing, when you're saying that, what you're kind of doing, it's like a little slight little insult because you're saying you're doing it like females do. A real nigga don't do nothing like a female. So that's where we're going wrong. And then how I'm doing it is how I'm doing it. And how you do it is how you do it. I don't know what you do to, to, to critique what your craft, whatever it may be. So you know what I'm saying? So don't have to kick a man when he's down. Yo, I've been down. I've been down. And and I don't even know if you knew to help pick me up. I've been down. Well, you, I'm not the one who was up kicking a man when he's down. Man, do you know when I was down, they said stay down, keep him down. Think I really care about a man down? Man, sometimes everybody got to hit the bottom. Sometimes you got to, if you don't know how to hit the bottom, you can't tell where the top is. What's up, Joyner? So, yeah, everybody got, sometimes everybody got to know what the what down is. You know what I mean? It ain't always going to be up. You got to, sometimes you got to fall, man. We fall down, but we get up. So, yeah. I don't know how the girls and all of that stuff do and all of that other kind of stuff. I'm doing it the way that I do it. This is Mark's way. And I don't need to do it for no money. I sell the books. When I wrote the book, I already knew the book was going to make me money. So that's why I wrote the book. So I wrote the book to make money. So I said that whenever the time permits and when people find the interest in what I got to say, that's when my book will sell and then I will make money. So I kind of wrote the book to make money. People never satisfied to you all the way. All the way. And after that, they still not satisfied. Man, you can't, can't please people. Do you have audio version of your book? Nah, don't do the audio version because of piracy. As soon as you um, let that get out there, I mean, take your lick and bounce back no matter. Yeah, yeah, bounce back. I'm bouncing back. Don't mean you doing the same thing that's having good morals. Nah, I'm bouncing back. This is just me promoting what I do. Like, what I do is is this. What I do is wait on this. So I ain't, I'm not uh, worried about him being down. I just was worried about when I was down and nobody was there to help me up. The only way I got up is by standing up and getting on my own two feet. Nobody gave me a hand up or nothing like that. No handout, no nothing, no help. I've been through, man, I, I look like this. If I, if, I, if I look like what I've been through, I wouldn't look like this. If I, if I look like what I've been through, I wouldn't look like this. <laughs> Yeah, we take yeah we get we bounce back. Good morals, yes 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 yes. All right, Wayne, salute to you for being one of the only survivors of that bullshit. Gotta survive, man. Gotta survive. Never give up. Definitely, I just can't hurt me. I'm like man. There's so many different ways to win. I'm I'm gonna still win. You know, I just want to do different kind of publishing. But look, this, that was a storm waiting to happen. Get over it. This is part of getting over it, brother. You know what I'm saying now? What you could do is just think about what you got going on in your life and then you just focus on getting over that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm already over what I had to get over. I did that when I wrote the book. Why do you think I wrote the book? That's called getting over it. And I did that in 2009, so I kind of got, got over it years ago. Yeah. So, I'm ready to get out of here on that note, man. Take, see if one more interesting question come up in here. Can't stop, won't stop. What's going on, Big June? Big June is definitely uh, in attendance. Can't yo follow? Can't stop. G R A C. Can't stop. G R A C. That's my buddy right there. All right.
I'm going to get on out of here, man. Greg, go take it down, get some rest. I can't talk. I can't respond to nothing for two days. Nah, that the people trying to. That to the people. To, oh, oh, my. Well, I'm with you, uh, multi talented brother. I'm with you. If I took it, if I read it wrong, forgive me. Sometimes that's the only, that's the one thing about reading. Sometimes on this thing, you can read something and then you just take it all wrong because it's it's you reading it and not really feeling it. Sorry. So my bad. All right, y'all. Claude Austin asks Reggie Bottom. Peace. Get the book. Kings of Carmen, it's your boy, Reggie Curl, you know what I'm saying? This is my cousin, Crunch, you know what I'm saying? He's coming by. No, I know me old. You fuck with lambskin condoms. I ain't even want my man to eat my because I eat meat from Aldi's. The fuck wrong with you? Aldi's, you should eat this. We don't know what the fuck that meat is. No! In prison. That's not the, the part about it. The, the part about it is he had the audacity to ask me why I ain't helping my sister. There ain't no point of both of us getting. I step up, look him right in his eyes. <laughs> he go to pat me down. $20, homeboy. I'm like, <laughs> no, sir. Punchline, punchline, punchline. You know how we turn. It is here.